welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Wynne Twit Dow, and I'm speaking with... Amanda Hill. And Amanda and I are currently in New York for DroidCon New York, where we're both speaking. Amanda, where are you based, and how'd you get started in Android? Um, I'm based in San Francisco. Uh, I was actually born and raised in New York, so happy to be back home. Um, <laughs> I got started in Android development at Venmo. Um, uh, they needed an Android developer, and at the time, um, the head of mobile uh, and I went out for wine, um, in full disclosure, and he was like, do you want to do Android? And I was like, sure, I don't know anything about what language it's written in. At the time, I only had really like very limited front-end experience, mm -hmm. but I was like, I could learn that, and so I did. Your talk this week is on an expandable recycler view? Yes. So I'm giving a talk on custom views, and I have to say that actually the first my first experience in the custom views was actually trying to break apart expandable list view and trying to get it to do what I wanted. So I really, really enjoyed your talk because it sounds like you're taking the concept of expandable list mm -hmm. view and then bringing it to the awesome recycler view. Yes, that is exactly what I'm doing. And I've actually taken one of the classes to achieve the expandable recycler view is expandable list position, which I literally copy and pasted from the Android SDK um, because it has package local scope, so I couldn't just use it, um, mm -hmm. but was very much so inspired by their solution. Can mm -hmm. you kind of explain like, I guess the the situation that led you to kind of creating this expandable recycler view. Yeah, library. sure. Um, so I work at Thoughtbot. Um, it's a development agency, and so we have clients and they have needs. And um, I was working for a client on a Fashion Week app, and they had a whole huge list of products. And I was already using Recycler View to take advantage of you know staggered grid layout, so everything looked really fancy and high end. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a humongous list, and so they wanted the ability to allow their users to filter the products by size, mm -hmm. uh, gender, color, um, designer, and um, again, they're so many designers. So to have just like a list where to have headers and then all the designers, it wouldn't have fit on the screen. It wasn't going to be a good mobile experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think this kind of the design of an expanding and collapsing list is very popular in web. And so I think a lot of people when designing, it's a very attractive pattern, especially right. when you're thinking about mobile where screen space is limited. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, build this. And I was like, right on it. Um, <laughs> the key kind of funky thing here was the ability to check the, uh, to select the children um, mm -hmm. that you wanted to use. Uh, so like within designers, the whole point is that it's a filter page. So I need to be able to select designers and unselect them. There's a reset button. And so I actually did try and use expandable list view in the beginning. Um, there are a lot of callbacks that have a lot of names and those names don't actually do what the name says it's going to do. So, you know, if you wanted to get a callback for like on child click or, you know, on item clicked, it doesn't actually re like return you when it's been checked or not. And it doesn't get called at the right time. Um, it's been a few months since I tried that. So I can't remember all the details around why that didn't work, but trust me, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> and so I went forward with uh, expandable list view uh, mm -hmm. using or expandable recycler view. And um, yeah, I started actually with the Big Nerd Ranch library. Mm -hmm. um, they have one that is also called Expandable Recycler View. Um, I definitely came across that while I was developing, and it, I felt bad about the naming, but it's kind of just so literal, and yeah, I, it translates between Expandable List View, and I was like, I, I could be clever here, but then who's gonna ever find it? So <laughs> um, I just spoke to, I reached out to uh, the Big Nerd Ranch guys on Slack, actually, and mm -hmm. I was like, hey, if this is a problem, let me know, I can still definitely change it, but like, it's kind of a literal description. Mm -hmm. um, and they were fine with it, so everything was cool. And um, it's an open source project, right? Yep. There's no expandable recycler view except for, you know, yeah. obviously the Big Nerd Ranch yep. one and now Amanda's. Yep. Um, what kind of things are you kind of hoping that, to get out of, like, um, yeah. maybe some forks? I'm so, no. Uh, so a big thing for me um, was, first of all, I, I wanted to give a talk. So I'm definitely a little bit selfish here in that I was like, I want to give a talk. I have mm -hmm. never felt that I had anything worthy of speaking about. Um, and so I was like, I wrote a library, I'm gonna give a talk. And then I was like, I also wrote a readme and a blog post like introducing the library. So it was thus like, what else is there left to say kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I realized that in developing the library, um, I like was able to look at the Big Nerd Ranch version because it's also open source, but there were reasons why I couldn't use it. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, so I could explain those reasons without by any means like bad mouthing them. It's, I had different client needs. Um, and then also talking about like how I approach my solution. And I thought that was an interesting kind of story. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a little bit about how Recycler View works on mm -hmm. a deeper level than people might necessarily be aware or mm -hmm. you don't really think about. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's interesting. So it's a very quick overview of like how you would use the library, mm -hmm. um, then a deep dive of how I built it. Mm -hmm. um, I built it with this idea of extensions in mind um, because I needed the ability to check children and mm -hmm. I wanted to have different, you know, group, uh, you know, price range had to look different than designer, so mm -hmm. different view types. So the library comes with two extensions actually. Oh, cool. But I'm kind of hoping that 
at the end, people like are inspired to go and ask either ask for their own extensions or build their own extensions. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually been like really disappointed in like GitHub's like forking stock ability. Like I wish I like I can see that people have forked it, but I can't like see the forks. Maybe I'm just not gonna use GitHub right, but I like wanna see what they're doing with it and like see how people are like building on top of it. So I'm hoping with a little bit of like education about how I build it, people mm -hmm. will be like like, oh now I know exactly how I would add this feature. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that it kind of builds. Mm -hmm. So something that you brought which brought up, which I thought was really interesting, is that one of the difficulties is that the situation you were talking about was like about multi-dimensional data, whereas mm -hmm. you were saying that Recycler View um, is more kind of one-dimensional in terms of yep. data sets yeah. and like how that's structured. Yes. So that's one of those like nuanced things that you take for granted, I think, in working with Recycler View, and it's not it's the kind of thing where I don't by any means like want to teach people because I think everyone knows it, but the way that Recycler View like goes about creating views um, mm -hmm. is a several step process. The first step is the, it calls get item count. Mm -hmm. um, and it uses that number to first be like, is there anything that I need to show? I'm not going to waste time inflating views if there aren't any. Mm -hmm. But then second, it kind of uses that number uh, that you return as the upper bounds of the number of views it needs to create. Right. So let's say you need, you know, get item count returns five. Mm -hmm. So then the first, after that, it's going to call get item view type. Um, mm -hmm. And when it calls get item view type, it passes you a position. That number is a number between zero and get item view count or get item count. And it, so like, it's only iterating over your data set linear, right. single dimensional data linear, linearly mm -hmm. English. Um, it's only <laughs> um, it's only iterating over your data linearly. So your if you want to have a two dimensional data set like uh, expandable recycler view where you have a list of lists, right. so like a list of categories, and within each category there's a list of designers, mm -hmm. a list of colors. Mm -hmm. um, you need some way to translate that. Right. And then once you do translate that, the question is like, do you keep like, do you have a new list that you mm -hmm. store all those translations in? Mm -hmm. So, like, what you see on screen is translated, or do you have one, just your one two-dimensional array right. and some way of kind of going back and yeah, forth? Yeah, and flattening it kind of thing. Exactly. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, I, and, and you never really think about it that way, because you think about it a lot of instructors, like, oh, you can do a grid view, and you yep. can do, like, all these kind of different different layouts with recycler view, but it is inherently linear. I never yep. thought about it that way, but you, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. And so when you actually do have... Yep. naturally multidimensional data, then yeah. it's a little bit tough. It's a little harder, yeah. And I think a lot of people, there are a bunch of really cool solutions out there for headers, because I think headers and footers right. are the exactly. most common yeah. thing that people need. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I think it, at all those points, you have to ahead of time be like, this is the header, or like, this is the section. Right. And it's like, it feels like it should, the whole point of this, why they built, why Google released it in 2014, was to be more extendable and for it to be like more multidimensional and have heterogeneous data. So mm -hmm. um, trying to find a clean solution that I thought was kind of compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. So you could use a certain piece without tying you in necessarily to this expandable component. Right. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, I, I'm actually really excited for your talk. I think it's really cool. And if y'all have ever been in a situation where you need something like an expandable, re expandable recycler view, you should definitely check out Amanda's uh, repo up on GitHub. Yep. And so thank you so much, Amanda. Um, thank and, you for having and, me. and of course, the DroidCon talks will be recorded. So if you can't make it this week, then you should definitely check Amanda out online uh, when her video comes out. So if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, Twitter is definitely the best way. Um, my Twitter handle is at Mandy Bess, uh, Amanda, so Mandy, and then Bess, B-E-S-S. -S. Uh, it's actually also my GitHub um, handle. So if you find the library, same spelling and everything. Awesome. Single brand. Cool. Well, I'm really looking forward to your talk, and thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much. Thank for you for having me. Being, oh, it was awesome, and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.